Hey everyone, it's time to go over the last major conflict in medieval Europe, and that is the Hundred Years' War, which is actually a series of wars fought over a period of 116 years, from 1337 to 1453, between England and France. So, by the time this video has concluded, you should be able to give a basic outline of how the war went, uh, who was winning at the beginning, what the big turning point was, and who eventually won. You should be able to provide those basic pieces of information. You should also be able to identify and describe the role that technological advances played in the war, in particular new weaponry, uh, new types of weapons. Those have a major impact, especially early on in the war, and you should be able to uh, describe that. Also, you should be able to explain how the war and its aftermath affected the way France and England proceeded going forward after the war over. So, here are some causes of the war. First of all, you've got economic rivalry between England and France. They both were jockeying for position for like supremacy in medieval Europe and wanted to have stronger trade than the other. There was also an English desire to keep the land that they held on mainland Europe. Uh, you can see on the map there at the right, uh, England was not just the island of Great Britain in 1337. They also had some holdings along the coast in France, the port of Calais, which is that little dot up there near the top, and then they held some areas uh, on the coast there in western, what we would now call France. And there was a great deal of national pride on both sides. The French thought they had a right to control that land, and they wanted England out of what they considered to be their territory. England, on the other hand, actually wanted to go a bit further and have what they called a continental empire. They wanted to have land all over mainland Europe in addition to the island of Great Britain. So, you do have two conflicting sides here, and it comes to a head in the year 1337 when they begin fighting each other for this land uh, in France. Early on, England was cleaning France's clock. Uh, there are two very notable battles during the Hundred Years' War. The Battle of Crecy, which was fought in 1346 and the Battle of Agincourt, which was fought in the year 1415. And they won these battles with the aid of some new technology, some new weaponry. One is the longbow, and you see a picture there of an English soldier using a longbow. Now, bows and arrows have been around for a long time, but they were usually smaller, and they were what you would call crossbows. Uh, longbows were more accurate. You could fire them off much faster than you could fire a crossbow and they had a much longer range, they could fire much further. So, using longbows, England was able to just decimate the French forces at Crecy and Agincourt. Some English forces over the early course of the war also used cannons, uh, very primitive cannons, to attack forces, enemy forces that were further away from them. So the longbow and cannons definitely helped England gain a major advantage early in the war, and for a while, it looked like the war was going to be lost for France, and they thought they may end up losing everything, that uh, all of what we would now call France was going to fall under English control. At least that was the fear. Until a major turning point happened in the form of a teenage girl. And that's Joan of Arc, which you've probably heard of her. Uh, she was 70 years old. She was from Orléans in France. She is called the Maid of Orléans. Uh, and she was a peasant, and she went to the king of France in 1429, and she said that she'd had a vision from God, and she had been commanded by God to save France, to be France's savior. And at this point, the war was going so badly for the French that the king was willing to try everything, and he was like, sweetheart, knock yourself out. So she goes out and ends up leading the French army to a series of really, really crucial victories in 1429 and 1430 that end up pushing the English back. Well, England, none too pleased with uh, being beaten by uh, a girl and by being beaten at all, she ends up capturing her in 1431, and she is put on trial. They just wanted to basically shut her up and get rid of her because she was such an inspirational uh, figure and, and so inspiring to the French army. And they ended up putting her on trial for witchcraft, and she was convicted, and like all convicted witches, she was burned at the stake in 1431. But what they did in the process was create a martyr. A martyr is someone who dies for a righteous cause, and the French saw her as being a major inspiration even after she had died. So rallied 
by the memory of Joan of Arc and, in, and properly inspired, the French ultimately defeat the English in the Hundred Years' War. The war came to an end in 1453. And England lost everything in mainland Europe that they had held before, except for that tiny little dot up at the top of uh, France, the port of Calais. And they eventually end up losing that also about 100 years later in 1558. So what effect did the Hundred Years' War have on the development of Europe? Well, first of all, you have a lot of national pride in France. It's, it's one of those, you know, yay, we won. A and that's going to lead to the government having more power. The king, you know, being emboldened by his victory begins to make the government stronger. And so you have a stronger government and a monarchy, whereas before in France, the monarchy hadn't been quite as powerful. England, since they've lost ev almost everything they had in mainland Europe, feels a little chastised at first, um, you know, tail between their legs a bit, but they eventually decide, well, if we can't have land in Europe, we'll look elsewhere. So England begins to uh, lay the groundwork for their exploration of other parts of the world, especially uh, the Western Hemisphere, the Americas, later on as the 1400s give way to the 15 and 1600s. One of the biggest impacts is that new technology begins to make the old technology obsolete. Uh, castles are not strong enough to withhold cannon fire, or withstand cannon fire, for example. Um, old weapons like the traditional crossbows that the French were using early in the war are now obsolete because the longbow is so much better and, and can fire much further. So you see those things start to go away. It also leads to the decline of the feudal system in Europe because knights aren't needed anymore. You don't need these trained knights on, on horseback, you can just use common soldiers who can fire a bow and arrow. And because of that, you don't have the need for these small cavalry forces anymore, these, these armies on horseback. You need big infantry that can, you know, fire crossbows and stuff like that, or longbows rather, and stuff like that. So you see the feudal system become not needed uh, throughout most of Europe uh, at this point. So that is the Hundred Years War. As always, ask your teachers if you have any questions and be ready for a quiz on this video in class. Cheers.